Hello there, welcome back to IndyCar on Sunday, the 3rd of September. Um, difficult to tell really today, from the news at least, um, that there's been any great stride forward towards independence, other than, of course, the massive march which happened in Edinburgh just the other day. And we'll come back to that towards the end of the programme. But to, first of all, George Fikes, or should I say Lord Fikes, of wherever it is he's the Lord of. Um, George Fikes is uh, probably one of the most ancient British Labour peers to come out of Scotland. And he's made some comments regarding the Union, which I think um, probably sum up the truth of the matter. George Fikes has claimed that the, the Union is not a Union of Equals at all. It's not voluntary either, and according to him, it was never intended to be either of these things. Now, could it be that he's just mistaken and he's just saying this out of spite because he doesn't want independence to happen, or is it actually true? Well, I think actually there's a grain of truth here. As far as the British government is concerned, at least, they believe that the Union is permanent and that Scotland really does not have any choice in the matter. That in 1707, we basically signed over our entire country to England to do with as they pleased. And of course, we know that's not true because the um, Treaty of Union contains nothing in it at all which transfers ownership either of Scotland's landmass or its seabed or indeed any of the bountiful resources that either of those two things contain. And yet we still see plundering going on in the Scottish oil and gas fields, plundering going on in terms of our electricity supply with the recent um, announcement that a contract to build some <laughs> metal warehouses which are there temporarily to help the British state to con construct some kind of superconductor to connect Scotland's renewable um, wind energy fields with the English national grid further south as some kind of major benefit only that comes from the Union. But you'll notice that it is only a contract which is for some temporary buildings which are there to house the machinery which the British state is going to use to build this super connector to siphon off as much of our renewable energy as they feel like. So the plundering goes on. George Fikes has really just confirmed what everybody suspected all along which is that the English state regards Scotland as its possession and its cash cow to milk as much as possible for as many centuries as they can manage it. So I think it's safe to say that even if uh, the Union is technically voluntary and there's nothing in the treaty that says we can't leave it under our own steam with our own uh, people voting for that, it is regarded, I think, by the British state as a complete colony. It is a resource exploitation colony of the British imperial state, if you like, and they maintain that grasp over it to this day. Now, as well as trying to maintain the um, the grasp of their natural resources and to keep plundering them as they wish, they've also foisted upon us their new monarch, and he was on display with his missus in a recent Highland Games, where, <laughs> again, in the usual British, or should I say English way, the pantomime of the Scottish king being dressed in tartan along with his wife and greeting the peasants and accepting their homage at a Highland Games is a spectacle which I think is intended, obviously, to reinforce the mythology that King Charles and Queen Camilla are actually the monarchs of Scotland, which of course they're not because neither of them has ever worn the Scottish crown jewels and neither of them, particularly the King in this case, has ever sworn the Scottish monarch's oath. And so, technically speaking, King uh, Charles and Queen Camilla are basically the King and Queen of England on holiday at their basically, I suppose, their holiday uh, residence in the Highlands. Again, here to be seen and to give the impression that they have full overlordship over all they survey. And that, you know, people in Scotland at Highland Games dressing up in tartan, and it, it does look very much like the top of a biscuit tin most of the time. <laughs> and forcing small children to go up to the King and Queen and present flowers and gifts is, I think, a rather uh, embarrassing and humiliating thing to be doing. But then again, I'm more of a Republican by nature. I believe in elected uh, heads of state and not in kings and queens. Kings and queens are for fairy stories that you tell your children. They belong in um, 
Hans Christian Andersen stories and Grimm's fairy tales. And there's no grimmer fairy tale than King Charles and Queen Camilla attempting to present themselves as the King and Queen of Scotland just because they're wearing tartan. And finally, that brings me to the recent march in Edinburgh, which was a huge success, and I am delighted to see over 25,000 uh, fellow Scots marching through the cities, uh, through the capital city streets to basically support the push for independence. And I'm also gratified to see the First Minister actually addressing the crowd. Now this is something which I felt his predecessor tended to shy away from. We didn't often see Nicola Sturgeon addressing a full independence march with people from all parts of the movement attending. And I mean all parts, it wasn't just SNP members, this was yes groups, yes hubs, independence groups and organisations from across Scotland converging on the capital for this major event and by all accounts it was a massive success. My only criticism of this, which I voiced earlier on in a written post, is that the rhetoric was strong and there were some extremely good raising speeches from some very notable public speakers but there was a lack of any kind of concrete idea about how we are going to obtain this independence and right at the moment, uh, of course, the SNP is still preparing for its autumn conference, at which we hope there will be uh, a new motion put forward by a Scottish uh, National Party branch, which we are hoping will attract uh, as much support as possible, not only uh, from other branches of the SNP, but from some of the uh, shall we say, big hitters of the SNP's political pantheon. So it is hoped that during the Autumn Conference there will be some meat put on the bones of the independence uh, offering which the SNP is preparing. Right at the moment nobody really knows what the plan is. Although it's, it's fair to say that there are a raft of other major events being planned at the moment by various groups across Scotland and long may that continue. The problem I also see, and this is something which um, a few of my um, viewers and followers have remarked upon in the last 24 hours, is that the average age of people on these marches tends to be pretty old. We, we tend to go on marches when we're later in life, um, usually over the age of 35. You do see quite a number of young families with small children, but what's lacking here is young people between the ages of 16 and 25 and engaging that particular demographic in terms of political awareness is quite a difficult ask. If you go to any any church or re religion anywhere in Scotland and ask them how easy it is to attract young people to their religion they'll tell you it's extraordinarily difficult. So to engage that particular demographic is going to be key. It's not fair and it's not probably wise to assume that the majority of young people under the age of 25 will in fact vote for independence when the time comes. There needs to be information for them. They need to know exactly what it is that is better with independence for them than it would be under the present situation. And I think we have to emphasize just how much more could be done to develop new sustainable industries, high technology industries which reflect the high level of educational attainment that these young people are actually achieving. If you come out of a Scottish university with a first class degree in anything at all, it's extremely difficult to find a well paid job which is, I would say, appropriate to your skills and knowledge and your education here in Scotland. It's nearly always necessary to migrate further away, either south of the border or abroad, to find some appropriate and well-paid job in your chosen field. And that is something which has been the case for many, many decades in Scotland. We do not have those high-tech jobs, we do not have those high-paid industries yet, which we should have, and will only come actually once we have governmental control over all the levers of power. And that means being able to invest in new sustainable industries. That takes independence to do that. We cannot um, have a government which can direct funds towards developing these industries unless we tear ourselves away from Westminster control because we know that they're siphoning away our ability to do this every single day. So I think to sum up the, the general feel of how things are today 
on this particular day and the weekend. The British state is doing its best with its usual soft propaganda to try to convince us that just because they have foisted their monarchy on us, and George Fikes has told us basically in true Dalek form that resistance is futile, that we should just accept whatever the British state decides to give us. But then again, we have this massive turnout in Edinburgh of 25,000 people who think completely the opposite. One thing I did take issue with, um, well, I still do, I have taken issue with this for a number of years, is the assumption that the SNP makes that everybody wants to rejoin the European Union as soon as we become independent. Yes, there are major advantages to trading and being free to move and free to move money and jobs and everything else around the EU so that Scotland has access to that. But it's not necessary to rejoin the European Union immediately. In fact, it would take a very long time to do it. However, to get Scotland back off its knees and trading again freely with the European Union only requires us to join the European Free Trade Association in which we could start up trade with the European Union within months rather than years or decades. And that would at least give us a stepping stone back into the European Union without full membership being necessary and give us a chance to experiment with using the European Free Trade Association is the conduit for both travel, for work, uh, for finance and of course for importing and exporting without all the enormous delays which Brexit has forced upon us. So I think we need to find routes in which we can uh, convey these messages to young people. And most young people get their news from things like Snapchat um, and from most of the, I, I would say the uh, more immediate forms of social media. Facebook is not a place where most young people spend a lot of time. However, young professionals and people in university or are coming out of university tend to look for things on, um, web, on websites, on platforms such as LinkedIn, which is for professional people and people recently qualified in university looking for work or trying to network their businesses. And I think LinkedIn might be a good place to start fishing around and publishing more on the benefits to young people of independence as opposed to being basically the second class uh, citizens of the United Kingdom where all of our major, and I'm talking about our massive multinational industries such as oil, gas and renewables are not under the control of A, the UK or companies um, which have been lobbying United Kingdom's politicians uh, to maintain favour. So there are ways in which we can reach these young people and of course there are many young people who do not go through university who go on to more practical um, careers in, in other fields. Now there are probably as many or more of those and they will require different messaging as well but it's time that all of us started thinking about how to engage them. I intend to do the same thing and I will experiment with posting programs like this or shorter versions of it on things like Snapchat, um, WhatsApp and various other, uh, shall we say, more uh, quickly accessible forms of social media. But anyway, in the meantime, I'm optimistic for the future and I'm hoping that the SNP's conference coming up in the autumn will produce a tangible plan to get us to independence using it, either the next general election or any general election thereafter. <coughs> in fact, if possible, organising a defiant uh, so-called wildcat referendum, which incidentally would still be perfectly lawful anyway. But whatever we do, we need to make friends with our European allies and we need to get them on our side no matter what the plan is. And I know that the SNP has been reaching out to its European contacts prior to this next general election and I hope they continue to do that. Somebody said that Alba was notably absent from the march uh, recently. I am not sure about that because I simply wasn't there so I can't comment. However, everybody involved in the independence movement can and should be going to these marches. It doesn't matter the views or the personalities of the various groups involved. What matters is the unity of people marching and turning out to support it. And that really is my message. Unity is a hard thing to actually do, especially when there are party political strains 
and old scores to settle. They need to be set aside and we all need to start thinking how to engage with that young demographic of Scots who really need to be on side and voting and marching in, as enthusiastic uh, as enthusiastically as us oldians are. Anyway, that's it from me today. I hope you've enjoyed the programme and find the topics inter interesting. Um, I wanted to say a gigantic thank you to everyone who has contributed to my crowdfund recently. I was very much down on my uppers recently because of the long layoff I was forced to endure after the accident I had. However, I'm now back and uh, raring to go. And you should see some more programmes in the next few days. I'll be on holiday officially from the 6th of September until the 16th, so you may not see much from me in that particular week. But I'll be back again shortly after that and back in action as soon as I start back to work. Anyway, that's it for this weekend. Enjoy the sunshine while it's here and I'll catch up with you in the next few days. Keep the faith, everyone. Bye for now.